we had something happen on the homestead that was quite unexpected. A few days ago on Sunday, when we got home from church, I was going to put Daniel down for nap and my oldest daughter went to the barn to feed some hay because we left in such a hurry for church that we hadn't gotten a chance to actually throw any new hay to the animals. And when I came out from putting Daniel down, she had a smile on her face and said, hey mom, when was June supposed to have her calf? And I was like, um, September? And then she got a huge smile on her face. So of course we all went running to the barn. So if you haven't been following my channel and keeping up with the whole story of the dairy cow, from day one when we moved here, I wanted a dairy cow and it's been a little over two years and we finally are in this position, but it's a story. So with this particular cow, I picked her up back in November and I bought her bread. She had been bred with sexed semen, which meant that she would be giving birth a 90% likelihood to a female calf, which would be perfect because this breed would also be great for dairy. She is actually was bred when I bought her with an exotic bull. I believe it's some type of Brahmin cow and it just sounded really cool. So we drove to Kansas, put her in the trailer and brought her back home. And I was anticipating a calf in June. Around December or January, she developed an abscess. Something huge just started growing on her and my sister who is a farmer noticed it. And so I had the vet out here. She took care of the abscess and I asked her if while she was here, she could just check the progress of the pregnancy because she had been AI'd on September 21st. So if you aren't a farm person, that essentially just means that they put semen in whenever she was in heat. That's the layman's terms for it. And she should be pregnant. And at this point, she should have been three or four months. And the vet put her whole hand in there. <laughs> Sorry for TMI if you're not a farm person. And she said, I have the entire uterus in my hand and there is nothing in it. She just said it was empty. And so I messaged the lady I bought her from on Facebook and she said, maybe she lost the calf in transport, but she really was bred. And I asked her if it had been confirmed with an ultrasound and she said, yes, it had. And so it should have occurred to me that the vet could have been wrong because I've heard from so many people that the vet can be wrong, especially when an ultrasound isn't involved. And also I should have seen, if this lady was telling the truth, I should have seen some evidence of a miscarriage and I didn't. Maybe she miscarried it and something ate it. I didn't know, but I didn't even consider the possibility that the vet could be wrong. So I loaded her up on another trailer and I brought her over to my friend Stephanie's house because she has a Jersey bull. Two months later, we had the vet come out again because she has a few females that she was trying to get bred as well. And so the vet came out and checked all three of them and she said that our cow, June, was two months pregnant, which was perfectly consistent with when she was exposed to Stephanie's Jersey Bull. Well, that is what I had in my head. So I did the math. She'd be due in September with a full-blooded Jersey. And that was completely my plan. That was the only possibility I ever considered nothing else. And lo and behold, <laughs> she was bred by that first AI experience in September. I ended up putting it in a due date calculator. And if she was AI'd on September 21st, like the lady told me she was, which she obviously was, uh, she would be due on June 30th. And she came right around her due date with a little heifer calf that is very obviously from the bull that the seller on Facebook showed me that she was bred with. Such an obvious difference with the ears that she is not a Jersey. She is a Brahmin type Jersey mix. So this put us in a spot of needing to figure out the whole milking setup 
very quickly. I'd planned to do a lot of this in August and just, you know, have the milk stand ready, have any grain ration and halter and all the, the supplies, the large stainless steel bucket and the strainer, everything ready so that when the calf was born, I could, you know, if she looked too full or engorged, milk her right away. But that is not what happened. My parents are cattle farmers, and so my dad wanted to see the calf, so he stopped by the day after she was born. How does it compare to uh, Angus for the size? It's pretty big to me. Does it? Tall? Yeah. Just tall, yeah. I just got some ears on it. <laughs> and look how these dairy cows get with their uh, their milk bags. Oh my lord. <laughs> no. She's got there pretty Grandma's soon. Got it, so is it, I was gonna ask you about that. Is that too much? Like it's been on no, there since. but it needs a what do you do? What does one do? I, I, I think she should discharge it on her own. She might even pull back and yank it out. But he doesn't have much experience with dairy, and so we really needed to figure it out. The next day, the Crakey family, so they have a channel here on YouTube called The Crakey Family. They have nine kids, they homeschool. We actually have met them before because they live in our area. They offered to come out and help us build a milk stand, and I told her, I think my exact words were, well, I feel kind of bad, but I also am not gonna turn you away because <laughs> yes, Luke and I could figure this out, but you guys have a dairy cow and I would highly welcome your experience and knowledge. We obviously so need to do. feed them while they get Yeah, them. yes. So, do you have feed? No. Where's the other 36? I don't. Yeah, we do you have feed? No, you know what you could do. It only took them a few hours to put a milk stand together. We just built a platform and a little head gate. And then Julie Crakey's husband, Jason, said, you want a milker? And I was like, well, I mean, I'm a little nervous because I've been headbutted by her before, but we better do this while you're here. Yeah, Bella was saying maybe your cow also didn't really, your calf didn't do the back ones either. She doesn't, no, she favors the front, which is kind of a pain. I guess it's, oh. she's right here. I guess just cause it's closer to her leg, it's harder to get in there. That's one thing, I mean, you also has a size difference, you know that? Yeah, that, that oh, I didn't realize that. Easy. Like right now, this is really hard to melt because I can't get a full uh -huh. pinch and draw down on it. Right. It's just so tight from right. her not being milked. <laughs> right. But I mean, it's it's coming. It's there. You know, and you'll know you'll learn your cow probably just like you guys learn your goats. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that one's. That one's good to go. Yeah, it is good to go. She's getting it. You are so cute. Oh. She's yeah, she's half um, like Sweet. Brahmin, like an Indian cow. Sweet. And she did amazing. I did not expect her to be like that. Just based on how she's seemed sort of aggressive in some situations, the fact that she just stood there and let us milk her without even kicking was unbelievable. We did use a little bit of grain. We also kept her calf nearby. Now. We ended up doing another milking the next morning, and I thought at first, let's just not bring the calf. She is calling for her. You want your baby? Get out.
I switch just to make sure I get something from both sides. I mean, she doesn't have a ton. I think because we milked her late last night. I mean, I think she's the calf's keeping up on it. It's nice when you can set the bucket down and use both your hands. I just don't know. I feel like I'm gonna be able to with her. Did they just kind of quit, or because he was like it was gonna get like three gallons? Well, I think it's when you separate the calf overnight. Yeah. So the calf's taken a lot. I think the only goal right now is to be mm. sure. I don't know. I guess. I guess I could put it in a jar. Yeah. Yeah, the only goal right now is to get out, like, what's too much. In fact, it's probably enough. See? That's what you... That's, that's what the coats did. If you didn't... What? Like, if you didn't... They kicked the bucket. They kicked the bucket. I mean, I could go wash it if you want that home or I'm not that here. worried about it. I, this is mostly just like getting into the routine slash making sure she's not going to get masticated. My only goal is to shoot, shoot a stream. What'd you say? My only goal is to shoot a stream into a cat's mouth. I said we could accomplish that. I really would like to put this collar on you, but probably now's not the time because oh, well, your mom. She fully, just locked up? She's not all the way locked up though. Oh, her sides. And I don't want your mom to freak. Go back. Okay? I can change this too. I could add more guardrails if you want. If she's gonna act like this, no need. No need to. I just thought she was gonna be like a wild, like yeah. monkey bronco type of thing. But now she's just like a She just wants food. all her. Yeah. Come on. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up, Junior. I know it. Come on, little calf. That went really well. Yes, it did. Priority is to get the fencing done and then lead her in from the field into there. That's gonna be. It's too late, cat. There might be a little bit on the milk stand. Can you lick that up? But that one, my first milking on my own, actually went extremely well. As long as we kept that calf by her, a little bit of grain, she was content to just let me milk her and it was wonderful. So going forward, we plan to do once a day milking and calf share. So just like we did with the goats, I plan to put the calf up at night, milk her first thing in the morning and then put the calf and the cow back together all throughout the day. And we'll just do that once a day milking for now. I don't really plan to ever not calf share. I know that you'll get less cream and less milk, but I just value our freedom more. And I, I know I can handle the once a day milking because we did it with the goats for a year. Now I don't plan to actually start separating the calf at all until about two weeks, but I did need to get some milking sessions in because she was looking rather engorged. What can happen with dairy cows is they essentially have four quarters. And if the calf isn't taking milk from one of them, it will get really overly full and engorged. And that was what was happening with ours. The calf was clearly favoring the front. You could just tell by looking at her that there was no milk coming out of the back or just that she hadn't really touched them. And so that was a priority. I actually learned this from my friend Vanessa over at Crafty Gemini. She's had dairy cows for a long time and she messaged me right away and was telling me that we needed to get her in and get her milked 
ASAP to avoid mastitis. So I was really wanting to, but also not sure exactly without the milk stand how to do that. But this all worked out so well and I cannot believe how well she milks. I'm excited to make this a daily part of our routine. Even if it came three months early, I'm actually really happy that it did because, you know, who doesn't love fresh milk? So this is our current milk setup, but I wanna show you what will ultimately be the milk parlor. The reason this is it for now is because the fencing still isn't fully done. It, it actually is done. We just need a few more gates, obviously, so the animals won't get out. And then we also need access to where I can get her to the point easily where I wanna keep her. So I'm gonna show you that. Currently, I can get her just in an area over there and bring her into this area. Now we wanted it in shelter, so when it's winter time, it gets really cold. I know a few times when I milk the goats, I could not even stand being in a drafty area. It was just too cold. And so I know that's gonna happen again. Your hands just are freezing, and when you're just a little bit in shelter, it feels significantly better. So I wanted that, and then we also needed a place that'd be easy to clean where we could hose it off. So that's why we chose this concrete area here. Now the stand is pretty basic. We set it on a few four by or three four by four posts. Then we just did these two by sixes. We cut them, they were eight footers, so we just cut them in thirds to give us this 32 inch width. Then we put some two by fours here on the side to create this little area for her to be sort of trapped in. Now, I was actually really concerned that we should actually make it go all the way back because I thought she was going to be wild and crazy and I didn't think that this would work. But since it does work, it's actually really great because I have full access. I don't have to reach around any pieces of wood. So if you have a cow that isn't trained to this yet, which apparently ours is, um, you're going to want more enclosure but then probably ultimately you'll want to take that off so that you can actually access her a little bit better. Now this barrel here was the Crakey's idea. They have this on theirs as well. It's just a half a barrel fixed on here for grain. And then we carried the platform out underneath that. And then this little head trap here is pretty nice. So she goes in, then we push this shut and then just this is on a hinge and then she, she can't get out. A really simple setup that came together in one evening thankfully. We just put up a few pieces of plywood. This is to keep the calf from going further into the barn because she does not do well without her calf. She goes pretty nuts. So as long as the calf is in here we're good to go. Now the future milk parlor area is just beyond this in this middle bay of the barn this was completely luke's idea i never imagined this is where i would milk but he had some really good points about it one there's this hole and i'm assuming at one point when this barn was used for whatever it was used for i'm assuming cattle maybe even dairy for drainage so this is perfect it's actually also don't know if you can tell, but the floor does angle towards it a bit. So the stanchion will go here and then we can hose off and it'll drain away. And then what's really cool, Luke has to build me a ramp right here because it'll be really hard for her to get up. But there is this barn door access here into the pasture. So I will go find her wherever she is and I've been told that when they get used to this routine, she'll be standing here, or at least somewhat close, waiting, because that's the only time she's gonna get grain, so she's gonna want it. And she'll be here, or I'll go find her, I don't know, we'll see. I'll lead her through this door, which we can open a lot more. She'll just go right through here. Chickens are over here. And to the right, up a little, ramp straight into i'm assuming the stanchion the entrance will be back here straight into it and then 
I don't know I'll what else I'll want over here I know I'm gonna want a hose extended extending from wherever I don't know how that's gonna work in the winter but we'll figure that out there is also a hydrant just like a one bay over enclosed in this barn so I'll want hose access obviously for cleaning maybe some tables I don't really know what all you need barrels for grain but this will be our little milking parlor area and I think it's a really great one nicely enclosed during winter I'm gonna be warm all right, well, thank you so much for watching this video and following along with our farm life and making this little property a homestead. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.